Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. It is just a blessing to come into your homes on this morning to worship with you. For those of you who may not know, I have been going through sickness. And yes, I say that I have been going through because God has been taking me through. I attended an online conference on yesterday and it was called Desperate for Jesus. And it was uh, put on, hosted by Tony Evans' daughters at uh, the Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship Church. And I want to thank Ms. Rhonda Eaglin for passing that information on to me. But one of the speakers really spoke to my heart. She had suffered a stroke, and it left her paralyzed, and her body was all messed up. And she said that God let this particular suffering happen to her in her life because she could handle it. So that statement really, really made me think, is that why we go through trials and go through suffering in our lives? Because God says that we can handle it? There is a quote that was sent to me on the internet and it says, I asked God, why are you taking me through such deep waters? God said, because your enemies can't swim. And it went on to say that the favor of God will take you places your enemies can't go. So for those of you who are listening to me and to myself, we might be in deep waters right now, but just know that God is taking us through the deep waters because he knows that we can handle it and he knows that we can swim through. So I just want to thank God this morning for taking me through the deep waters. Our scripture is Psalm 92 verse 1 and 2. And it says, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of the marvelous things you have done. I will be filled with joy because of you. I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. Our song is simply, Thank you, Lord. You've been so good. You've made a way. You brought me out. God, you saved my soul. And I just want to thank you, Lord, for doing all those things for me. And I know you feel the same way. Help us sing. Thank you, Lord. You brought 
Father God, we thank you now. God, we bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us out. We thank you for blessing our lives. We thank you, Lord, for giving us health and strength. God, we thank you this morning, Father God, for saving our souls. But Lord, we know that you are good and you are God. And you are God all by yourself. We thank you for this privilege this morning to raise our hands to lift our voices, to stand on our feet and give you glory this morning. God, we honor you, Father God, for you are God and you are God alone. We thank you, Father God, for this privilege, for this house of prayer, this house of worship, for this worship moment. We thank you for it, Father God. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us on today. Keep us focused on your word. Bless your word to be real to us and bless your word to fall on good soil today. That Father God, that we will walk with you. We will be blessed by you and we will lean and depend on you. Lord, we say thank you for who you are. We say thank you for who you are being. We say thank you for what you're going to be in our lives. And Lord, we ask you to bless us this morning that your word will be strong in our lives. Yes. In the precious, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And we ask it all. Amen. Amen. And thank God. I just want to thank you, Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We thank God for another privilege, another honor, another great opportunity to come before you as we come to lift up the name Jesus. For if he is lifted up, yes. he will draw all men, women, boys, and girls unto him. Let me call your attention to Proverbs chapter 11. Yes, we're still in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 and 25. In the Old Testament, the book is Proverbs. The chapter is 11. The verses are 24 and 25. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 and 25. Thank God for who he is and what he's already done. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 and 25. When you found it, you will discover these words. There is one who scatters, yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right. 
but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who watered will also be watered himself. I want to talk about a commitment to wealth. A commitment to wealth. There was a, a revival going on, as the story is told, and a young man invited his friend who didn't go to church to revival. And as the preacher was preaching, the revivalist said, get all you can. The young man leaned over to his friend, the friend that does not go to church, leaned over to his friend who invited him. When the preacher said, get all you can, he said, oh, yeah, I'm going to love this preacher. He says, this preacher is really preaching now. Then the preacher says, save all you can. The young man leaned over to his friend who had invited him to church and said, woo-wee, this preacher sure enough preaching now. I love this type of preaching. And the preacher finally said, Give all you can. He leaned over to his friend and said, man, why are you invite me to hear this preacher that's talking about nothing? He was greatly disappointed. He was satisfied as long as the preacher said, get all you can. He was ecstatic when the preacher said, save all you can. But finally, when the preacher said, Give all you can, he struggled with the principle. Many of us in today's economy struggle with giving. We struggle with giving to the Lord. We struggle with giving to other people in need. We struggle with selfishness. We struggle with not obeying these words. In these verses, Proverbs 11, verses 24 through 25. First of all, I want to let you know that the proverb writer, the wise writer, is not talking about just giving any old kind of way. He is talking more about giving in a godly way. He is not talking about just going out on the street, passing out money and passing out talents and passing out time to any and every person. But more strategically, he's saying that you ought to give in a godly way. These verses shape our attitudes toward wealth. It shapes our attitude toward getting rich and staying rich. It shapes our attitude toward how the wealthy ought to be sharing with those in need. You notice I said those in need, not those who are in greed. We have to understand that men will always be your friends when you have plenty. But when plenty becomes little, men will find other friends other than you. We have to understand that the wealth we have gained was meant to share. He says in these verses, by giving freely, a person has plenty. By giving freely, people are blessed. During the writing of this proverb, it was a time when farmers were farming their crops. And some farmers would gain a lot from their crops. Some of them would say, I am going to store up all I have. I'm going to hoard all I have. I'm going to put aside all I have. And it's good to put aside for a raining day. We ought to teach our children, don't spend all you have in the same place the same day. 
We ought to teach our children that you need to save. You need to invest. You need to spend. You need to put some aside for a rainy day. There are only four things you can do with money anyway. When it comes to money, you can only do four things with money. Number one, you can spend some. And if it's your money, you ought to be able to spend some. You ought to have the liberty to spend some of your money. You can spend some. Number two, you can save some. And everybody, everybody all over this world ought to be saving money, especially in times like these. Amen. We need jobs, we need income, but we also need increase. So we ought to spend some, we ought to save some, we ought to invest some. Yeah, we ought to invest, we ought to put it aside. You know the story how Jesus paints the picture of one master going on a far journey and he leaving three different servants some. He came back to the one that he had given five and, and he blessed him. He came back to the one he had given two and he blessed him. He came back to the one he had given one and he had hid it in the ground. Jesus says to him, you ought to have taken my money, you ought to have taken my talents, you ought to have taken my gift and been a good steward with it and traded it among those who are investors. Yes, we have to get to a point in our lives where we ought to, ought to invest some. So you ought to spend some money. You ought to save some money. You ought to invest some money. And the fourth thing that you can do with money is share some money. That's right. Oh, I may not get that many likes today, but the fact of the matter is you ought to share what you have. God has given us talent. God has given us treasure. God has given us time. And we ought to share all three of them. And we ought to begin by sharing with the Lord. Amen. You see, God has a great investment plan. He, he has a great economy that's not like man's economy. You see, God's economy is different from man's economy. First of all, man says, get all you can. Can all you can get and sit on the can. Whereas God says, share with the needy and be blessed. Mm -hmm. Man's economy says, get and keep getting. God's plan, God's economy says, give and it will be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Man's economy says, I make all the money I can so that I can have a lot in the end. But God's economy says, those who sow sparingly will, weep, will reap sparingly. Mm -hmm. Those who sow bountifully will reap bountifully. Mm -hmm. That means to us, if we give away a little, we'll reap a little. If we give away a lot, we will reap a lot. And we ought to give to the Lord before we give to anything else. Or anybody else. You see, growing up in Mississippi, I understood how we got a bushel of beans or bushel of peas. We would put five or six little round beans or peas in the ground. And in a few months, we would have a whole bushel that came from those little five or six beans or peas. Let me just tell you, God will not only bless you as you bless him, he will also give you more than what you bless him with. Yes. We are to sow bountifully that we will reap bountifully. This is an attitude of wealthiness. This is an attitude of stewardship. This is a wealth attitude and we have to get to the point where we commit to being wealthy and commit to wealth. Man's economy, man, man's economy says, 
Keep your money so you will have enough. God economy says, as he says in, in Malachi 3.10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that, I, that there may be meat in my house, said the Lord. Prove me here and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that, I, that you have not room to receive. When God says he will open up the windows of heaven, what he's saying is, I will open up the floodgates. Yes. I will open up the floodgates of heaven and pour you out a blessing, a blessing, just one blessing. I will pour you out so much blessing in the midst of one blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. Yes. That's God's. That's God's economy. God says, if you're going to make it during this downtime, you're going to have to keep right on giving back to the Lord. You see, God has a way of blessing us in spite of us. God says that if you bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, so there will be meat, there will be, there will be light, where there will be construction, there, there will be ministry in my house. He says, I dare you to prove me. And you will see that I will open up the floodgates of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you have room enough. You don't have room enough to receive. In the text in Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 through 25, and I'll leave you alone. He says that there are those who scatters and they yet increase. It's amazing how in God's economy, you can scatter, you can give, you can disperse, and there will be increase. Mm -hmm. This word scatter means to disperse. This word scatter means to give. And it is a, a, a principle of keep on giving. Mm -hmm. The problem today, while we're in the quarantine, there are folk who who are sitting at home. There are folk who are not in the church. There are folk who are not coming and showing up at the church. So they've come to the conclusion, because I'm not going to church and because I'm not taking my body physically in the church, I don't have to give. All right. I just want to let you know. I just want to let you know, first of all, you're not giving because the church is in need. Because if, if your gift was the only gift that would be a blessing to the church, then the church is already bankrupt. You are giving because of your commitment to wealth, your commitment to the Lord, your commitment to the con conclusion that God is able to bless regardless of what I have. We give because we have a right relationship with God. We give because God is able to bless us in spite of us. Yes. It doesn't matter if we're showing up at the church or not. It doesn't matter if we're going to church physically or not. It, what matters is that God knows our heart. And not only does he know our heart, he knows our attitude. Yes. And if we're going to have the right attitude towards stewardship, the right attitude toward God, we will scatter, we will disperse, we will give what God has blessed us to. Amen. There are those of you who are sitting at home who, who have not been faithful to the giving process. I want to say to you, if you want to be blessed, just keep on giving. Yes. If you want the Lord to continue to bless you, just keep on giving because the Lord has a way of blessing you even other than through finances. Yes, sir. See, Malachi, Malachi says in Malachi 3 and 10 and through 13, he says that as you bring the tithes into the storehouse, that there will be meat in my house, said the Lord. I want you to test me and I will prove to you that I will open up the floodgates of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you have not room enough to receive. Yes. He goes on to say, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Mm -hmm. this, 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 this implies 
as it does in Proverbs. It, it implies that when, when you have a harvest coming, there's always something and there's always somebody that's trying to prevent you from getting your harvest. Yes. The devil, the devil himself, the devil is looking forward to you being miserable. God says, if you bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, he will rebuke the devil for your sake. Well, preacher, what is re rebuking the devil? I'm sure glad you're asking. He will rebuke the devil, meaning on all levels, God has a way of shutting the devil down. God has a way of limiting the devil. He says, he says, if you bring you all the tithes into the storehouse and there will be meat in my house, said the Lord, prove me, test me, and you will see that even though we're in a pandemic, God will bless you. Even though other people have not ends to meet, God will bless your ends to meet. Yes, even though people are falling out, even though people are dying around us, God has a way of blessing us. Because let me just share with you. It's just God's blessing that we don't have COVID-19. Yes, it is. It's just God's blessing that, that we are not dead and gone. It, it's just the blessings of the Lord that we have not come out like others have come out. Right. It's not because we're so special. Mm -hmm. It's not because we are so holy. Mm -hmm. It's only because of God's commitment to us. Amen. God has held the line for us. God has rebuked the devil on our behalf. And God is still rebuking the devil. Yeah. On our behalf. What you talking about, preacher? I'm saying to you that as you give, there will be increase. The text declares not only will there be increase, this word increase is not just income. You see, income is what you get from your job. Income is what you get from a day's or a week or two weeks of work. I'm talking about increase. Increase is more than just money. And when God says that he will rebuke the devil for our sake, then God is saying that he will stop Satan from harming you. God is saying that, that, that he, will, he will shut the devil down when he wants to be close to you. You see, God has a way of blessing us through dangers seen and dangers unseen. And regardless of what you've been through, Regardless of what you're going through. Sister David says she's been going through some sickness. And regardless of what you're going through, it could have been worse had not God shut it down. It could have been really bad had God not shut it down. But because God has a way of shutting it down. Because God has a way of blessing us. Now is not the time to stop giving to the Lord. You can't beat God giving no matter how you try. You can't beat him giving. You need to make sure that you are giving to ministry somewhere. And I say to you today, if you're listening to me and you're not active in church, you don't have a church home, or you in between church homes, that says to me that you're in search, you are looking. And because you're in search and you're looking, I say to you, Plant your seeds in the New Beginning Church Amen. where there is good soil, where lives are being changed, hope is being renewed, marriages are being set straight. Plant your seed in good soil. Amen. The text declares in Proverbs 11, 24 through 25, there is one who scatters and yet he increases. The text declares that there's one who gives and keep on giving. And even though he's giving and keep on giving, he's still increasing. Mm -hmm. You know, some of you will argue with me today on your stimulus package money. Some of you would say, well, that's not money I made. That's money that was donated to me. <laughs> Don't you know that it's God right. that unctioned men that didn't want to give it to you? It was God who, who fell across the hearts of women who really didn't want to sign the bill for you. It was God who granted you that 1200 It's God that will grant you 1200 more. It's God that
that is keeping us and rebuking the devourer for our sake. You see, some of them are doing it for more votes. But what men meant for evil, God meant it for good. It's only God who keeps us and keeps the devil away from us and keeps the devil from influencing us. Let me just make another round. When, when God says, I will rebuke the devil for your sake, what he's saying to us today is that when the devil decides to take us out, God said, no, that's my child. Let it alone. When the devil decides to, to give us trouble, God shuts it down. When God allows the devil to, to do just a little with us, he chooses to shut him down before he kills us off. You see, God has kept us through this pandemic. Though many have gone on to be with the Lord and many have died, God has kept us. Many have recovered because God has kept you. And let me tell you, the thing about this virus, you can't see where it is. And you can't depend on your closest friend to keep it off you. And you don't know if your closest friend has it or not. So we all have to mask up. We all have to isolate ourselves. We all have to seal ourselves inside. We all have to obey the rules and the regulations of the CDC and the WHO. We all have to follow the instructions of the mayor. While God is opening our eyes to whether or not the, the governor and the president really cares. That's because God is rebuking the devil for our sake. There is one who scatters yet increases the more. And you would think the more you take away and give to the Lord, the more empty it will become. But God is replenishing us. Yes. Just like he did the woman at Zarephath. As she dipped in the bucket, her meal kept filling up. As she scooped out, out the oil, the oil barrel kept growing more and more. That's God's economy. This word increase doesn't just mean your income. It means to exceed. It means to prolong. It means to come up again. It, it means to gather and take further. This word increase means that what you give to the Lord, the Lord will give back to you. And he will give even more. Somebody here today came on this broadcast thinking that I don't have much and I can't give much. To whom much is given, much is required. And to whom that has a little, God only requires 10%. You see, it's not equal giving, but it is equal sacrifice. Yes. Tithes and offerings are, are not equally given because we are not on the same pay grade. It's because it's equal sacrifice. 10% of $5, 50 cents. 10% of $5,000, $500. It is equal sacrifice. And the Lord declares that as you give, you will have increase. Not only will, will he give us increase in our finances, he will give us increase in our health. He'll give increase in our relationships. He will give us favor when we don't deserve it. And I've told you many times before, <laughs> if God doesn't have money for me, just give me favor, I can get some money. God opens doors when he gives favor. And I don't need money to come into my hands. All I need is God to give me favor to make some things happen that normally would happen with money. God has a way of giving us increase, and he gives us favor. So the first part of that verse in the New Living Translation would read like this. Give freely and become more wealthy. Give freely and become more wealthy. Give freely and become more wealthy. Give liberally and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. It's right there. It's right there in the verse. It's right there in the verse. It says, it says, and there is one 
who withholds more than is right. There are those who will, who will pinch off and give to the Lord. And they won't give that which is right. That which is right. They withhold. They, they, they withhold that which is right. This word withhold means they keep it to themselves. They reserve it. They, they have it for a spare. And they hold back. I'm saying to you this morning, you can't afford to hold back. The wise writer today saying that, that we can't afford to withhold it because those who withhold that which is right, that which we ought to give, that which carries equity. Equity is that that we don't deserve. That Equity is not that that we have in our hand. Equity is what the value of it is. In other words, when we have equity, we have $10 in our hand, but God has a way of multiplying that 10 to become a 1000 he gives back with equity. Says that those who withhold that which is right, Proverbs 11, verse 24, those who withhold that which is right, it leads to poverty. It leads to poverty. Mm -hmm. It leads to deficiency. It leads to you being poor. It leads to you having need it leads to you being in want. If you hold back that which God says is right, you, if you hold back those things that you ought to be giving back to the Lord, if you hold back, it will lead to poverty. I've said, I've said many times before that I won't have another broke day in my life. And the reason why I can say that is not because I make a lot of money. And it's not because I have a lot of money. It's not because I've saved up a lot of money. But because I have favor with God and because I have been a blessing to the kingdom of God, I want to keep God at his word. Yes. And God's word says that if I give, he will make sure that I have increase. Yes. And he says to those of you who are not giving, those of you have shut down because of the lockdown. Those of you have stopped giving because you're not showing up at the church. It says to you that if you withhold that which is right, it will lead to deficiency. It will lead to you being poor. It will lead to you being in need, and it will lead to you being in want. I don't expect to see any clapping hands this morning. I don't expect to see any thumbs up. I don't expect to see any love hearts this morning. But the fact of the matter is, I'm like the prophet crying in the wilderness. You need to make sure that you give back to the Lord. Your time needs to be given to the Lord. Your treasure needs to be given to the Lord. And your talent needs to be given to the Lord. A question to those of us that are listening. Since this pandemic has taken place, how are you giving your talent back to the Lord? What are you doing? What are you doing to give your time back to the Lord? And God knows you ought to be freely giving your treasure back to him. We have to be creative in this 21st century. We have to be so creative until we understand that the, the ministry of the Lord has to keep on rolling, even though we're not going to the church building. Yes. How are you promoting God's kingdom during this pandemic? You need to be creative. You need to come up with ways to support him. You need to come up with ways to praise him. You need to come up with ways in order to, to keep on worshiping him, praying to him, yes. and spending your time with him. Because if you don't, the text declares in Proverbs eleven twenty four that if you withhold that which is right, you will find yourself in poverty. You will find yourself in poverty. We read verse number 24 uh, from the English Standard Version. It says, one gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withhold, but he shall give and only suffer want. It says when you come to the point where you realize that you ought to be giving, you ought to be giving on a regular basis. 
You, you ought to be giving. You ought to be giving. But Paul says that the, 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 on the first day of the week, you ought to give to the Lord. Yes. That means when you get it, you ought to give it. The Bible says there was a difference between Cain's gift and Abel's gift. The Bible says that, that, that Abel brought it early. He brought it first. And then it says that Cain brought it over a, a process of time. Cain brought it over, over the time he had gone to Walmart. Then he brought it. <laughs> Cain visited the, the online shopping spree, and then he brought it. The Bible says you ought to bring it when you get it. Yes, what does that say to us in the 21st century? What it says to us in the 21st century is that we ought to always give to the Lord off the top. We ought to always trust the Lord with what we have off the top because God is able to bless us a whole heap in a plenty yes. with the 10%. Mm -hmm. God is able to do more with the 10% than we can do with the 90% because all God does is take the 10% and bless those who trusted him with it over and over and over and over. It becomes perpetual. God continues to give back to us because we have given and obeyed him. Some of you still playing, paying dudes. It's time out for paying dudes. Some people are using the word tithe, but they're not tithing. And when you use the word tithe, this word tithing means 10%. This word tithing means a portion, a, the first 10%. Don't say, you're not, don't say you're tithing just because you're giving. You're only tithing when you give 10% off the top before Mr. Sam gets his. You give 10% off the top. Some people been giving off the bottom and they've been suffering need because and holding up their blessings because they haven't been given, giving off the top. Now, some of you will write with me as long as I was talking about these other things about wisdom, but the wise writer is still speaking wisdom in our spirit on today too. So don't shout me down because I'm talking about money. Jesus talked much about money. By giving freely, a person has plenty. But when he is hoarding, and when he is hoarding his blessings, he cut off his blessings. The stinginess leads to being in poverty, leads to being poor. And when we don't give God what God has asked for, when we don't give God what God has blessed us with, when we don't give back to the Lord as the Lord has given to us, we become selfish. Selfishness is foolish. Selfishness is foolish because it creates enemy and dishonors God. Selfishness is foolishness because it creates enemies and it dishonors God. Selfishness is foolishness. When you're selfish, it's like, it's like when you have a brother and a sister and you don't want to share your toys with your brother and sister. That's selfishness. How much more selfish are you when the same God that gives to you everything wakes you up in the morning, gives you the ability to inhale and exhale, that causes your heart to beat and, and blood flows to every extremity of your body? How much more should we give to that God? How much more? Let me look at verse number 25, Proverbs 11, verse 25. The generous soul will be made rich. The word rich means fat. <laughs> the word rich means anointed. The word rich means to be satisfied. There are some people who have millions and billions that are still not satisfied. The generous one, the liberal one, the liberal giver, the cheerful giver, the, the generous, the generous one, it implies prosperity. It implies unselfishness. It is, it implies being blessed. The, the generous soul, the generous soul, verse 25, Proverbs 11, the generous soul will be made rich. He will be made fat. He will be made fat. He will be made fat. He will, he will be made fat. 
the generous one will be made fat. And he who waters will also be watered. The word water means to be satisfied, to be enriched, to be informed. It is like causing a flow upon others. So first of all, we ought to give to the Lord. Secondly, we ought to give to others. Verse 25 says that he who refreshes, who watereth, he who refreshes others will be refreshed also. Yes. The problem with us is we want people that we refresh to refresh us. But that's not the way God's economy works. God's economy works in a way where you bless others and you go on down the road and others bless you. Yes. You have to understand that, that God is looking for someone who is generous. Someone who's a liberal giver, who's giving in good soil, who's being a blessing to the Lord, a blessing to the world. And as you are a blessing to the Lord, God is able to bless you even the more. Yes. The text declares that he is able to, to bless you with increase. He is able to bless your harvest. He, he is able to bless your health. He, he is able to continue to walk with you. He is able to bless your mind. He is able to continue to, to bless your children. He is able to continue to turn around your enemies. He is able to shut down the devil. He will rebuke the, de the devil, the devil, for your sake. He'll do it for you. He'll do it for you. He'll do it for you if you just keep right on, right on giving. Let me just make sure I put a disclaimer out here. I'm not saying that you give in order to get. But I am saying when you plant, you reap. When you sow, you bear blessings. I'm saying that if you're going to trust anything and anybody during this pandemic, you need to put your trust in God. Right. I would not trust any man at this stage in this pandemic because I want to make sure that when I call on the Lord, the Lord hears my cry right. and he pities every groan. I walked outside, and there's a big bear there. I'm not going to call on mom. I'm going to call on God. Amen. If there's a big bear there, and they've said that I, there's no way I can outrun him, I'm not going to call on a friend. I'm going to call on God. If I get sick, sicker than I can be, I'm going to call on God. If I get broke, busted, and disgusted, I'm going to call on God. So why not bless the God that you're going to call on in time of trouble? People who have the virus, they're, they're calling. They're not even calling on the president. They're not calling on Dr. Fauci or Dr. Birx. They're calling on God. The God who's a doctor in a sick room. I'm going to call on the God who's a lawyer in the courtroom. I'm going to call on God who, who is able to cool every fever. I'm going to call on God who is able to bless me even though I'm not really, really deserving of being blessed. I'm going to call on God because God is the one who blesses me. How much the more should we give unto the holy God? So don't take advantage of the pandemic process to stop your giving. Don't take advantage of the pandemic to, to slow down on your giving. Don't take advantage of, of this pandemic that God and God alone is seeing you through. Because your family member could have had it, but God watched over you. Yes. God is the one who, who keeps you in your sleeping and in your waking. God keeps yes. you. I'm saying to you today, commit to God your time. Mm -hmm. Commit to God your treasure. And commit to God your talent. That's what Jesus did. He put it in the hand of God. It was a commitment of all the wealth. Jesus says to us, give Caesar what is Caesar, but don't forget to give God what is God. We want God to bless us. We want God to walk with us. Now is not the time to quit giving to him. Now is the time to bless him even more. At our church, at our church, We've had some financial down times. And I've gone to the finance team several times. And they've come to me and said, well, Pastor Enns didn't meet this week. I said, well, write a check to this church. Give to the Lord. 
I didn't say write a check to my family. I didn't say write a check to my friends. I said, write a check to this church. We need to give to the Lord. They said, well, maybe you didn't hear us. <laughs> we, we did make ends meet this week. I said, oh, while you're at it, write a church check to this other church. And don't just write a little $10 check. Write $100 here, $200 here. Give back to the Lord. And every single time we gave just a little bit, God showered us with more. I'm talking about I'm talking about giving away six hundred dollars, and God bless other churches to give us ten thousand when we were in time of need. I'm saying to you, sow in good soil. I'm saying to you, sow so you can reap a harvest. I'm saying to you, make sure you give back to the Lord with the right attitude. This text deals with our attitudes. It deals with our actions. It deals with what we ought to be doing for the Lord. And if you don't have a church home, I say to you today, sow it in good soil, the new beginning church. That's what Jesus did. He sold his whole life. He gave his time, his talent, and his treasure for this old rundown world. Even though he was investing in us, he has caused us to invest in him. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus gave his life as a ransom for you and for me. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. He gave up the ghost that day. Mean men killed him. Took him to an old rugged cross on a skull hill called Calvary. He gave up the ghost that day. He died between two thieves. No man took his life. He gave his life as a ransom for you and me. He died on that hill that day. He gave it all back to the Lord. Mean men pierced him in his side. After he was dead, they pierced him in his side and out came blood and water. He died. His same blood has covered us and sealed us. They took him off the cross, laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because the preacher said it didn't need it too long. For early that third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. The door of the church is open. The same Jesus that died and rose is present with us today. And if you have not received Jesus as your personal Savior, now is your moment. Now is your time. Trust him. Bless him. You can receive Jesus today. By simply believing that he's the son of God. And out of obedience unto God, he gave his life as a ransom for you and me. By believing that Jesus is the son of God, he died on a skull hill called Calvary. And that he rose from the dead. You can be saved today. You can be born again today. If you never received Christ as your Savior, this is your moment. This is your time. Just get to know him. You can get to know him by saying, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new creature. If you would join me in prayer, I just want to lead you in that same prayer and invite Jesus Christ into your life. Will you join me? Just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose again. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe that if you re receive Jesus Christ, you're born again. We believe that when you die, you are on your way to heaven. 
we believe that God has welcomed you to, to heaven and welcomed you into the body of Christ. For those of you who are watching who don't have a church home or in between church home, I recommend this church, the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. You need to get to know Jesus and you also need a church home. If you receive Christ as your Savior, and if you desire to make New Beginning Church your church home, inbox me, message me, and let me know that you want this church to be a part of your life and be the, be the sanctuary of God that you will come to meet God. Inbox me and let me know that you want to be a part of this church. And let me just share with you, today's message was on money and giving. And I pray that God has blessed your heart and convicted your heart to continue to give even though we're in a pandemic. It is offering time. <laughs> it is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord. It is time to give to the Lord. It is time to give to the Lord. And you can give here at the New Beginning Church by three means. You can give to the New Beginning Church. First of all, by our cash app. Our cash tag is dollar sign NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls. You can give to the Lord Jesus Christ through our cash app. Cash tag NBC Souls. Or you can give by way of Zelle. You can do that by our email lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our Zelle account is lifting. Dot Jesus at yahoo.com. The idea is we're lifting Jesus because Jesus says that he will draw all men unto him. So our Zelle account is lifting dot Jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can give by way of P.O. Box. Our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Thank you for joining us here today at our worship service at 1045. We're here every Sunday at 1045 for our worship service. And we're also here every Sunday at 9 a.m. for our Sunday school. Thank you so much and please join us for our Sunday school at 9 a.m every Sunday morning. And please join us on Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights, join us on Wednesday nights for our Bible study. Our Bible study time is 7.20 p.m. Join us on Wednesday nights for our Bible study at 7.20 p.m. Again, thank you so much for joining us and being a part of our service. Thank you for being a part of what we're doing here at the New Beginning Church. We're looking forward to communion on first Sunday. Please join us for communion at 9, uh, at 1045 Sunday morning. Join us for communion. You can go out and get your juice, your crackers, and join us. For Jesus says, as often as we do this, we show forth his death and his suffering until he come again. So join us for communion on first Sunday. Also, this Tuesday night, this Tuesday night, for those of you who are members of the New Beginning Church, we will have our Zoom prayer meeting. We have prayer meeting every second and fourth Tuesday of each month, second and fourth Tuesday of each month. On the second Tuesday, we have prayer by way of phone conference. And on the fourth Tuesday, we have prayer by way of Zoom. So this is the fourth Tuesday coming up. I look forward to hearing from you, seeing you and praying with you. On our Zoom, if you don't have our Zoom number, contact me. Uh, you don't. You can contact me, and we can in, involve you in our prayer time, our prayer time together. Thank you to our visitors for joining us here at the New Beginning Church, where we are blessing people and we are lifting up Jesus. We are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. We are uniting the church, strengthening families. And we are ministering to schools. And we are also lifting up Jesus. For Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men 
unto me. Again, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Thank you again for being a part of the New Beginning Church. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for all that you have done, all that you will do, and what you're doing right now. We ask you to continue to walk with us. Bless us, and bless us to have wisdom when it comes to our time, come to our treasure, and when it comes to our talent. We thank you, Lord, that you blessed us with wisdom to get wealth, to gain wealth, and to be increased. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.